Richard, always great to have you. Uh, on the earnings conference call, you said copper supply development for many reasons is challenging. The supply challenge can't be solved simply by higher prices. Explain what you mean by that. Well, typically in commodities, there's a saying that, that uh, higher prices are solved by higher prices, low prices are solved by lower prices. But with copper, there's got factors other than just having a sufficient incentive price to invest that's blocking supply. Uh, some of that's geology, a lot of uh, there's some political events because of where copper supply opportunities are located. There's environmental challenges. So even with a price that's strong, and today's price is strong, I expect it to be stronger, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a wave of new supply coming on the market because of these other factors. Well, you, you went on to say as well yesterday, there's a real absence of new supply development, which is what you're getting at here a bit, that would be necessary to meet estimated demand increases. So in your opinion, and as you just said, you expect prices to continue to go higher, there's simply not the ability to actually meet the demand that's out there currently or, and or develop sufficient supplies? It just takes such a long time, David. I mean, ours is a very, very long-term business. And as we go forward, there's significant new elements of demand coming for copper, most notably with carbon reduction investments. But as we go forward, demand is inevitably going to increase absent some black swan economic events. And so there will be a need for more supply. That will lead to scrap recovery, some substitution, and eventually people will be incented to invest. We have significant resources that we will invest in, but it just takes such a long time. So in that environment, uh, I feel very confident pointing to, to even higher prices, even though today's price is very strong. Well, give our viewers a sense as to how long is a long time. And, you know, I know on the call as well, you sort of called out the U.S. in particular as sort of creating even more delays when it comes to building new mines. So, David, uh, you're talking about start to finish for a known resource in terms of development of five to ten years. Uh, you know, people in the oil industry talk about months to have a supply response. In our industry, it's, it's literally years. And I think we have as good, if not a, a better, of an undeveloped resource portfolio than others in the industry. And we're very positive about copper, but it's just going to take that long to develop it. Uh, government policies are an issue um, in the U.S. where we have significant growth opportunities. We benefit because our projects are brownfield projects. It's very difficult to get community acceptance for a new greenfield mine in the U.S. and elsewhere. So we, we have a favorable position, community support, government support. We worked hard to achieve that by doing things in the right way. But uh, it's, uh, it, it's just a challenge. That's a double-edged sword for copper. The fact that supply development takes so long is very supportive of prices. Um, but the facts are it does take a long time.